big surprise. In the winter, it's cold. And that means traction is a whole new game. Whether you commute year round, you like to play in the winter, or if you just end up in winter conditions on a tour, traction is always one of the top concerns. And how we set up the bike and the techniques we use make all the difference in maintaining that limited traction. This is winter riding. This looks like a nice, easy, powdery snow, but it turns out this is packed ice. The technique here is, and here's the thing, when you get onto solid ice, whether it's on pavement, gravel, or here, all bets are off. It's solid ice, there's no traction. So the goal here is to ride at a pace that allows you to see what's coming up. This is when we wanna get up on those pegs. The more challenging the environment, the more technical our riding gets. So we can stand up so we can see what's going on. What makes this rideable today is that I have just enough churned up ice and snow above it that I can get some traction in it. And if you look at the tires back here, you'll see a little bit of tread and where I'm actually leaving a tread pattern up behind the tire. That allows me to have some forward momentum. The instinct for most riders when they get into this situation is as they're riding, the front end may turn and slide or the back may slip and immediately the clutch is off and the riders throw the feet down and try to stop. But in this, you need to keep the momentum. Once you get any kind of uphill, if you stop, you're dead in the water, you're starting all over again. You wanna keep forward momentum. To do that, I'm gonna keep the RPMs up, about 500 RPMs above what I actually need to be moving forward. I'm gonna keep one to two fingers on that clutch and just slip that clutch just to keep the momentum going. Because if I feel the back wheel spin, I immediately need to buffer just enough power from the back wheel that I reduce the spin, but I keep moving forward. That's the goal, that's what I'm after. If I get into a situation where it's deeper, I may actually allow enough spin where I have to paddle out. And that's why we have knobbies or more aggressive tires in this kind of a riding environment. What makes this so challenging is you have an ice edge trap here. This is solid and a flat surface that the front tire can't crawl up and over. When your front tire comes in against that hard edge, it ends up going parallel to the edge, so it's side by side. And when the front tire and the back tire both come into it, the bike can't balance and it'll fall over. So when that front tire comes up against that edge trap, what you need to do is turn the handlebars towards the actual ledge here, this frozen, the little micro frozen cliff. And that pries that front tire back in a way so the bike can continue to balance. That front tire can serpentine. In situations like this where it's really frozen, you may end up in a situation where you're maybe three, four, five, even 10 feet, where that front tire is pushing against the edge, but you're not able to relax and let it come back out. And you're pushing in and the bike is crawling sideways and that front tire is pushing sideways against the edge. That's perfectly okay. If you lose balance and throw your feet to the ground, just don't lose momentum. This is fun, this is a challenge, but it's not necessarily what I'd recommend for a commute. Temperature really is the biggest difference between winter and the other seasons. When it's warm out, going from dry pavement to wet pavement can have a very small change in actual traction. But as we get into colder temperatures, when we get to near freezing or freezing temperatures, then it makes all the difference. This thin sheet of water can very quickly turn to ice, but also the dry pavement also loses a ton of traction. The tires need to be warm. They need to flex and put heat into them to get maximum traction. That means in the winter, even on dry pavement, our traction can be significantly reduced. Make sure you reduce your lean angles and reduce your speeds.
Compared to summers, I prefer riding gravel roads in the winter. Gravel is the one surface where my performance actually goes up in the winter. And there's a couple reasons for this. One, I don't have to worry about dust. The ground is more packed in because the, as the rains come through and other vehicles go over the gravel, they, they pack everything down nice and tight. And it's a lot easier to predict what the traction is. The bonus to riding on gravel in the winter is it's always a cooler temperature, which means I get to wear all of my safety gear without all the temperature concerns and the overheating. My riding technique changes very little. I do, however, still have to pay attention for black ice. The moisture that gets into the gravel that helps it pack down to become predictable can also freeze when we get near those freezing or below freezing temperatures, and they can catch you off guard. So do have to pay attention for that. This is fun. It's one of the hidden treasures of riding in the winter. Tread pattern and tire pressure are two primary concerns when looking to maximize your traction in the winter. When looking at tread pattern, you'll see I run a more aggressive tire in the winter. If I'm only running on pavement or hard gravel, whether I have a street bias adventure tire or a very aggressive knobby, it's not gonna make a lot of difference. But when I get into conditions like snow or mud or other traction situations where I may end up needing to paddle, now I need that gap in those tires. So a 50-50 like the tire I'm running here or an aggressive knobby will give me that extra advantage. If I choose to run tire studs in a, in a motorcycle tire, I need to make sure that that tread is as thick as possible. So when I run the studs into the tread, it doesn't pierce all the way through the tire and give me a flat. You will need to have motorcycle specific studs to do that though. A tire needs to move and flex, and the more it moves and flexes, the more heat goes into the tire. That heat helps our tires have more traction. This is one of the reasons why knobby tires on the big bikes wear out so much faster than a street bias adventure tire. In the winter, running an aggressive 50-50 or knobby tire can be to our advantage. It's hard to talk about tires without talking about tire pressure. Tire pressure is critical on the motorcycles, and as you probably know watching the other videos, I'm not a huge proponent of constantly airing down and airing up for every situation every time I leave the pavement. But winter riding is the exception. And the reason is most riders believe that by airing down, you increase the area that touches the ground, contact patch, giving them more traction. This isn't actually true. It's about pounds per square inch. And the idea when we air down in the winter is not that we're putting more surface area down, but we're allowing the tire to flex more. Because it's rolling over a larger traction patch, it moves and flexes, putting heat into the tire. Because the roads are colder in the winter and the tires are colder in the winter, we need as much heat as possible to give us every advantage. When airing a tire up or down, you want to start with the tire pressure that's recommended for that tire on that motorcycle. If you're running one of the stock tires, you can look in the owner's manual and you can air up 10% or down 10% without any adverse effect. After that 10%, you want to be careful and experiment. If you're running a tire that was not stock in that motorcycle, the best place to get that optimum starting pressure is from the tire manufacturer. The maximum air pressure that's printed on the sidewall of the tire is for maximum load. It is not necessarily the ideal pressure for maximum traction. 